Pixar films may be iconic in their own right, but there are some clear references to a number of movies that influence them right in front of our noses. Now, who doesn't love a good Pixar film? If you don't, you're probably one heartless monster. Pixar movies will certainly go down in history as some of the most iconic movies of all time, and that's because of how beautifully crafted they are with a wonderful attention to detail. It's this attention to detail which also means that there are a number of hilarious and beautiful homages to iconic movies, some of which are almost shot-for-shot -shot remakes of the films they're paying tribute to. In this video, we will take a look at 16 times Pixar honored fellow iconic movie scenes. From times they imitated spy thrillers to parodied classic horrors and even made super meta references, get ready to start seeing double as we take a look at some hilarious homages by Pixar. Not only is The Shining, or The Shinning as The Simpsons would say, one of the most beloved horror movies of all time, but it's also one of the most parodied. Case in point, The Shinning. Stanley Kubrick's classic is so often parodied, and Pixar makes reference to it a heck of a lot. Like, really, a lot. In Toy Story 3, the number in Trixie's screen name, Velocistar 237, is a reference to the ominous Room 237 in the movie, which is different from the book's 217, as well as the license plate on the garbage truck, which is RM237. In addition to this, the moment Bruce the Shark breaks down a door, he yells the phrase, Here's Brucey! is a reference to, well, you know what that's a reference to. But one of the best references in the movie comes in the first Toy Story where we see a carpet with a familiar pattern in Sid's house, which fans of the horror movie will certainly recognize. The cool guy group walk is almost such a cliche at this point that it's hard to actually refer it to one particular movie. So the cool guy walk that takes place in Monsters, Inc. can be attributed to a number of movies, such as The Right Stuff and Reservoir Dogs to name a couple. But as I, like many cinema fans, am a Kubrick buff, I am going to attribute it to the iconic walk performed by Alex and his droogs in A Clockwork Orange. Kubrick's dystopian movie, which was at one point banned in the UK, has become a cult classic and, like The Shining, is one of Kubrick's most parodied and emulated works. Without sounding like a broken record, Stanley Kubrick movies get parodied and homaged a lot. In fact, almost every movie set in space at least pays some kind of reference to Kubrick's space epic 2001 A Space Odyssey, such as Interstellar, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Moonraker, and of course The Simpsons because they parody everything. Pixar's space set movie WALL-E is of course no different, with the ship's auto design very reminiscent of HAL 9000's look, complete with the red eye and everything. Plus, the moment the captain manages to stand on his own two feet, Strauss's also Sprague Zarathustra plays, which is well known as the 2001 theme. With his recent passing, Sir Sean Connery has created a lasting legacy with a number of acclaimed movies throughout his career such as The Untouchables, The Hunt for Red October, and The Rock. But the one he is best known for and one he's made famous is the role of James Bond, a character he played seven times. But his most popular outing as the character was in the 1964 movie Goldfinger, which established the formula for the Bond series, filled with high-tech gadgets, huge over-the-top villainous plots, and of course, an Aston Martin. Arguably the most iconic scene in the movie comes when Goldfinger is interrogating Bond with the use of a laser, a scene which is emulated in Toy Story when Sid interrogates Woody to find the location of the Rebel base which is also a reference to A New Hope. Where is the rebel base? On the subject of Bond, Connery's performance as the role may be the most iconic, but Daniel Craig has since made the role his own with his 2006 movie Casino Royale, a refreshing take on the franchise. The movie starts in an explosive fashion with a black and white sequence following Bond's first two kills as a 00 agent, which includes a grisly fight in a bathroom. This scene was tributed in the 2011 movie Cars 2, which also has a similar fight scene in a bathroom in Tokyo. On to the work of Steven Spielberg, the creator of the Hollywood blockbuster now, another filmmaker whose movies have been constantly referenced in movies. One of the more obvious parodies of his work comes in Toy Story 2, when Rex falls from the car in Al's toy barn. In the scene, Mr. Potato Head turns and looks in the rearview mirror to see Rex chasing the car, a reference to an iconic scene from Spielberg's Jurassic Park. Remain seated, please. Just like every movie set in space makes a reference to 2001, almost every movie involving a shark makes a reference to Spielberg's classic horror movie Jaws. In Finding Nemo, not only does the shark parody The Shining, but he's also an obvious parody of the movie Jaws, with his name Bruce not only being a reference to a typical Australian name, but the name given to the shark from Spielberg's movie. While the shark in the movie had no name, the models created were all given the moniker Bruce, named after Spielberg's lawyer. 
which uh, might have had something to do with the fact that neither ever really seemed to work. Another reference to the movie is the moment Dory and Marlin release a torpedo which gets caught in Bruce's mouth and allows the fish to escape, mirroring the final moments of Jaws when Roy Scheider's Sheriff Brody lodged a scuba tank in the mouth of the deadly shark only for it to lead to the beast's rather gruesome yet totally satisfying end. Seriously, who didn't cheer when they first saw that shark blow up? Sadly though, because it was a kid's movie, we didn't quite get to see the same kind of explosive end for Bruce in Finding Nemo, but the general idea was still there. Nice. But not only are multiple Spielberg movies referenced by Pixar, but the same exact scene comes up in two separate Pixar movies. The scene in question is the iconic moment where E.T. and Elliot take off on their bike and fly in front of the moon, which pretty much everyone will recognize. The scene is referenced in both Cars and Toy Story 4, who both emulate the scene. On the subject of Toy Story 4, one of the highlights of the movie was the king of the internet Keanu Reeves' cameo who plays the motorcycle rider Duke Kaboom. In a post credit scene, Kaboom gets his mind blown, metaphorically of course, this isn't an episode of The Boys, and responds with the word Whoa. which isn't only a reference to the actor himself who says the word a whole lot in his movies, 113 times to be exact, but the famous moment Reeves delivers the line in The Matrix. Like Kubrick and Spielberg, Star Wars' effect on cinema is so huge that it often finds itself the target of parody and tributes. The series itself is a nod back to classic westerns and samurai movies, but has been endlessly parodied. In fact, we've already mentioned it in this video. In WALL-E, Pixar makes a subtle nod back to the first entry in the franchise, A New Hope, when Eva produces a hologram in a similar way as R2-D2 does in the movie. Also, in the movie Up, the pack of dogs communicate in the same way as the rebels in the X-Wings before attacking the Death Star, referring to each other as Grey Leader as opposed to Red Leader, which I assume is a dig at dogs being colorblind. It is almost impossible to discuss Star Wars references in Pixar and not mention the moment in Toy Story 2 where Zerg reveals to Buzz that he is actually his father, which is obviously a reference to the moment in Empire Strikes Back where Han cuts open a tauntaun and says extremely slowly, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> of course we're joking, you know what it's in reference to. Not only does Pixar make references to classic movies, it also makes references to movies within the House of Mouse, aka fellow Disney movies. Okay, technically Star Wars movies are now Disney movies, but still. In The Incredibles, as Elastigirl makes her way through Syndrome's lair, she sighs upon seeing her butt in the mirror, a tribute to the scene in Peter Pan when Tinkerbell does the exact same thing. As you probably have guessed, out of all of the Pixar movie series, Toy Story is the most prolific when it comes to iconic movie references, especially Toy Story 2. But one you might have missed comes at the climax of the movie, when at the airport an announcer can be heard saying the phrase, the red zone is for loading and unloading passengers, there is no stopping in the white zone. For all the movie buffs out there, you may know this exact announcement from another movie, the classic comedy Airplane. The white zone is for immediate loading and unloading of passengers only. There is no stopping in the red zone. But easily the most meta reference on this list is one made in The Incredibles, and that is because the same actor appears in the Pixar scene and the scene it is paying homage to. That of course is the scene in the third Die Hard movie, Die Hard with a Vengeance, where Samuel L. Jackson goes to make a phone call but is held at gunpoint by a nervous rookie cop. This scene appears in The Incredibles almost shot for shot, in the moment a thirsty Frozone goes for a glass of water, also being held at gunpoint by a rookie cop, with Frozone of course being played by Samuel L. Jackson. This next one is kind of a cheat, because basically the whole movie is a tribute slash remake of an iconic movie, and that is one of the earlier Pixar movies, A Bug's Life. No, it's not a remake of DreamWorks Ants, although it is basically the same movie. It is, in effect, a remake of Akira Kurosawa's epic movie Seven Samurai, and by the same maxim, The Magnificent Seven, as that is effectively a remake of Seven Samurai 2. Both Seven Samurai and A Bug's Life focus on a small community that seek outside help to prevent a merciless band of thugs stealing their hard-earned crops. Although Hopper is slightly more menacing than the bandits in Seven Samurai. But A Bug's Life does pay homage to Kurosawa's classic with a number of the visuals reminiscent of Seven Samurai, including the opening which shares a number of similar shots. This one isn't exactly a tribute to a movie scene, but it is a reference to an iconic movie character. If you're a big Studio Ghibli fan like me, you'll be very familiar with the sleepy troll Totoro from Hayao Miyazaki's brilliant My Neighbor Totoro. 
If you are a very extremely vigilant Ghibli fan, you would have noticed Totoro making a cameo in Toy Story 3. Totoro is one of the toys in Bonnie's room, and you may have noticed him a couple of times in the background, even sharing a high five with Woody in one of the best character crossovers of all time. Which was your favorite reference? Any we missed? What's your favorite Pixar movie? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for all things Pixar.